Glory to God. Glory to God. This is your Kingdom History 301 lesson number two. And we are discussing today Martin Luther, the battle axe of reform. That's what Martin Luther was, the battle axe of reform. Martin Luther is one of my favorite, favorite reformers to study. In Kingdom History, we take a look at the life of those that have gone before us. And Martin Luther is definitely someone we want to take a look at. This is what Martin Luther says in a quote. I was born to war with fanatics and devils. Thus, my books are very stormy and bellicose, warlike and belligerent. I must root out and the stumps and the trunks, hew away the thorns and the briars, fill in the puddles. I am the rough woodsman who must pioneer and hew a new path. That's it. That's Martin Luther. That's Martin Luther in a nutshell. Excuse me. He was that type of person where he, he, he said exactly what he meant and he was courageous, extremely courageous. So let's go on an overview for Martin Luther. Martin Luther was known for great courage. I want you to feel that in your blank. He was known for great, great courage to confront the world powers of, the Roman, of Roman Catholicism and to reform or change the world. That's what he was known for, great courage and to confront the world powers in the hierarchy of the Roman Catholic Church to reform or change the world. Roman Martin Luther was known for that courage to stand up. He didn't back down. He didn't run. So where did he come from? What, what, how did he get to that place of courage? Let's break it down. In the early years, number one, Martin Luther, fill that in your blank, L-U-D-E-R. That was his name, Martin Luther. Martin Luther was born November the 10th, 1483 in Elsbin, Germany to Hans and Margaretha, Margaretha Luther. He was born as Martin Luther. Later in college, he changed his name to Martin Luther, but his name was Martin Luther. Number two, he was raised in a family where it was common to value hard work and reap the results of it. So this is what he was instilled with. Filled in your blank. He was raised in a family where it was common to value hard work and to reap the results of the hard work. Six months after his birth, his family moved to Mansfield, Germany, where his father worked in the copper mines. His father then established to purchase a smelter furnace of his own and became, a res became respected in his community. His father moved to a different place to get a job in the copper mines. He learned what he needed to learn, moved up the ladder, learned how to work a smelter furnace, and then he saved his money and bought his own. That's going to be very important right now. And he became respected in the community. His father went to work in a very dangerous field of labor, learned the process, converting the process of converting metal into from mineral material and pulled his family out of the peasant class into a middle class by refusing to work as an employee when he could be the employer. So his father was was, was ambitious and was 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 courageous as well. Number three. In their house, discipline and prayer went hand in hand in Martin Luther's house. This was a learned behavior trait that was acquired through the many years of struggle financially. They learned to depend on God to meet all their needs. And even after they were no longer in the, present, in the peasant class, they continued to depend on God to supply all their needs. All of this was instilled in the mind of Martin Luther. His father was his hero. A praying man of courage and discipline, delivering his family from, from financial woes. That was his dad. His dad was his hero that would just work hard to get his family out of those financial woes. And his dad being his hero is going to be an important point. I want you to pay attention to that and remember that because we're going to come back to that in just a second. So, number four. He received his bachelor's and master's degree at the University of Erfurt, where he studied where he went on to study law as his father instructed. Now, remember, his dad is his hero. His father instructed him to go study law, and he did. He did. He went and studied it. He did just like his dad because he wanted to please his dad. He wanted to be like his dad. He wanted to do some things uh, that would honor his dad. He seemed content with his lot in life and the expectations of his father until July 2nd, 1501. When there was a, he was threatened by a thunderstorm, he was walking in a field, in a forest, and a thunderstorm hit. And in fear of losing his life, he cried out to the only help he knew at that time. And it sounds crazy to us now, but he cried out to St. Anne. 
And St. Anne was, was suspected to be the uh, legend to be the merciful grandmother of Jesus. So he cried out and he said, St. Anne, please save me. He promised in fear that day that if St. Anne would save him, he would become a monk. Out of fear and terror for his life, he went to his dad and he told his dad and he disappointed his family and changed his pursuit from becoming an attorney to becoming a monk and moved into the monastery. Now, in becoming a monk, he was committing to at least one probationary year of strict diet, rough clothing, vigils by day, labors by night, mortification of the flesh, the reproach of poverty, and the shame of begging. And he agreed to all of it. In 1507, he was ordained at the age of 25 to become a priest. Now, remember, he wanted to be a lawyer to please his dad. He had to go against his dad, who was his hero, in order to fulfill his obligation that he made in a vow. Now, that shows that he's a man of integrity, not only hard work, but a man of integrity. That's going to be important as well. Now, at the age of about 25 years old, Martin Luther, the priest taught the people about a banking system in heaven that held in its vaults the goodness that the people lacked in their personal lives. They taught that they had to transfer their goodness into their accounts so they wouldn't be able to come up short standing before God. The church taught that Jesus, Mary, and the other saints behaved much better on earth than they needed to in order to get to heaven. The extra credits for their goodness was stored in the heavenly banking system, which the Pope kept track of. This credit, referred to as pooled goodness or treasuries of goodness, was available to common people through the assigned activities of the priests referred to as works. Evidence of works was issued in a kind of receipt or a proof of purchase, known in that day as indulgence. All men were sentenced to purgatory and the Pope alone could determine how many years could be shaved off of your sentence in purgatory with the indulgence as your written proof of your account being adjusted. There were only the priests that were teaching this because they received it from the Pope. Everything they taught, they taught what the Pope told them to say. In 1512, at about 29 years old, John Wycliffe was made a doctor of theology. And he received a position to teach theology at the University of Wittenberg. Now let me break down what's going on. He's a priest. He's teaching what the Pope tells him to do. He's doing such a good job. They decide to make him a doctor of theology. And they said, all right, we're going we're gonna to put you in a position to teach theology at the University of Wittenberg. He thought he was unprepared and unworthy, lacking the knowledge he needed to perform the task to teach the Bible. He would now have to study the Bible. He's been a priest all of these years. For the past four years, he's been a priest and he's been studying the Bible. I mean, but he's had never studied the Bible. Although he was a priest, the Bible was new to him. But turning loose, this man of God with the Bible was the Catholic Church's greatest mistake. Know this. It is one thing to read the Bible that caused the trouble for their religion because religion works in the realm of ignorance but in the realm of the, but, and also in the realm of the soul. It bases its teachings on thoughts, legends, and denomination dream-ups instead of the, what that the actual scripture says. So in 1513 through 1517, he's about 30 to 34 years old, he began to study the word of God and the, the word of God began to set him free from religion. Feel that in your blank, number seven. The word of God began to set him free from religion. Here's some of the things that he studied. In Psalms 22, verse one and two, this change of his view of an unmerciful Jesus sitting over mankind, condemning them to hell, to a compassionate God who sent his only son to suffer, to redeem mankind. He looked at it when he said that, my Lord, my Lord, why have you forsaken me? He said, well, hold up. God is not looking to punish us if he sent his son and punished him for us. In Paul's letter, the revelation he received from the book caused him to understand the true meaning of righteousness and the justice of God. When he read in Romans 5 and 1 that the righteous were justified by faith, he was furious. He can now understand it. It went against everything that he had been taught. He turned to the Greek to find the meaning of justice. Justice was defined as a strict enforcement of law and a pronounced sentence. But it was the Greek definition of justification that set him free. Justification was different than justice. While justice was the enforcing of the law and the sentence, justification was the process of suspending the sentence. Now you can see the plan of God. God didn't seek to damn man, but to regenerate him, 
And this process of regeneration was to take place by faith alone. Through this new revelation, Martin Luther stood, understood all the work, that all of his worries stopped at the cross. All of his battles stopped at the cross. He realized that in the cross, it was Christ. In the cross of Christ, he saw the mercy of God in the cross of Christ. He saw the very price of victory over Satan and his demons. He could now see the truth of God's redemption and he immediately saw the error of the Catholic Church. He did not want the church operating in hypocrisy. So he sought every opportunity to bring the church to the light. He never left the church. He just wanted to teach the church. When truth is alive in your heart, it is impossible to remain silent to the lies and the traditions of religion. When truth is alive in your heart, it is impossible. Feel it in your blank. It is impossible to remain silent to the lies of tradition. When Pope Leo X attempted to complete the largest, most beautiful cathedral of all time, he increased the sale of indulgences. When Martin Luther found out about this, he was extremely troubled. Luther began to work on the list of concerns, questions, and challenges regarding the use of indulgences. There were a total of 95 questions that he had when he finished. And that's what he did. He nailed them on the church door of the Castleburg, Castle Church in Wittenberg. This is what we call in history the 95 Thesis. Martin Luther didn't write that to challenge the church. He just had some questions. He had some concerns. And he wrote a list of them, 95 of them. Now, nailing it to the church door was not remarkable. That's what anybody did. Anybody that had questions and wanted to form a discussion group, they would just nail their questions on the church door to form a discussion group. And Martin Luther wanted to get with his colleagues to discuss it. So he nailed it on the church door. Now, while waiting on a response, he went on in his studies. But what he didn't know was the 95 theses that he posted on the church door had been translated from Latin into German. And it was circulating among the common people as well as the church officials. In fact, it spread all across Germany in a matter of weeks. That's remarkable. They didn't have internet, emails, FedEx, UPS, United Postal Service. They didn't have any of that. But it translated and spread. Martin Luther is a hero for writing the 95 Theses and having those questions. But whoever took it off the church door and translated it into German, and, transla and, 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 and begin to uh, release it unto the common people is also a hero. So in 1915, at 34 years old, Martin Luther went to Augsburg in the fall to debate what was the first of many face-to-face -face battles with religion. It was the first of many face-to-face -face battles with religion. Luther began to write what is called the liberation writings. These were messages and lessons filled with scriptures that could educate the common man according to the word of God. Through these writings, many were maturing. His popularity was growing and he was becoming further established in his doctrine. A group of believers began to gather that Luther, would, who Luther would pastor, who were known as the protesters or the protestants. Luther pursued reform, deliverance from the wicked lies of religion. He did not protest the Roman Catholic Church in itself. He simply protested the lies and the manipulation of it. So he, he led a group called the protesters or the protestants. This is what we call them now, the Protestants. The Protestants. Every other denomination that, that is, whether you were non-denominational, apostolic, Church of God in Christ, uh, Assemblies of God, if you were any of those things, Baptist, um, church, I mean, church of God, it didn't matter. You were part of the protestant group. So in 1534... 51 years old, Martin Luther translated the Old Testament out of Hebrew into German. This made the Bible available to all believers to study along with his writings of liberation. This was important because number 11, he was dedicated to preaching the gospel. Feel that in your blank. He was dedicated to preaching the gospel. He received the responsibility of reforming the faith of the church. He once preached 195 sermons in just 145 days. And when he couldn't preach, he wrote letters, he wrote pamphlets, he, he talked to people, he did whatever he could to get the gospel out. That's an important point. On February the 18th in 1546, Martin Luther closed his eyes and left the earth to be with the Lord. He was 63 years old. The Catholic church that he oversaw became the Westminster Abbey 
of the Luther, Lutheran church. That's where the Lutheran came from. They came from followers of Martin Luther. We honor Martin Luther as one of the greatest reformers ever to have lived. However, in all of his dramatic exploits, in all of his confrontational encounters, his great spiritual strength came from understanding the simplicity of the word of God. That's the story of Martin Luther. I love that story of Martin Luther. I pray that it blessed you as well. We're going to continue to study history so that we can grow and develop in those areas. God bless you. Amen.